Well, from paid parental leave to affordable child care, Iceland is a model for a more gender equal world and what that would look like. I recently spoke to Iceland's first lady, Eliza Reid. She's also the author of a new book called Secrets of the Sprakar, an inspiring look into what is possible in the fight for women's rights. She'll be in Seattle this Friday to discuss it. You're a Canadian born writer. How did you end up as the first lady of Iceland? It is a funny story. Exactly. The the boring part is that I met my husband. He was just a history student then in graduate school in England. But I kind of um, contrived a date with him by fixing a contest to to win a date with someone. And we ended up getting married and moving to Iceland. And then he he ran for president and won in 2016. So you never know what's going to happen in life, do you? No, you really don't. But I like that you had the, the machinations to, to make that happen for you first and foremost. So that gives me the take charge of your life kind of vibe. I love that. Mm -hmm. Carpe diem, you know. Carpe, absolutely, but, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So your book lays out how Iceland is, is really leading the world in achieving gender equality. How, what drew you to this subject? I think it's something that has always interested me, maybe as a woman, and the fact that Iceland has topped the World Economic Forum's Global Jap Gender Gap Index for a dozen years now was something that I think as an immigrant, as someone who chose to make my home in Iceland, yes. it, it makes me feel a little bit like I get to brag about that. And, uh, and somehow there's things about the country that maybe I see a little bit differently that's, that stand out to me as quite special, that maybe people who are born in Iceland think is just is commonplace and ordinary. And, and I thought that that might be an interesting angle to explore in a book. And I think that's important. And, and sharing that with the other, with the rest of the world who may not even know uh, about the incredible points of fact that Iceland does to kind of create that equality, paid parental leave, affordable childcare, all of this. Having mentioned those, what else is Iceland doing that the rest of the world can learn from? We, as you said, we do have a lot of great policies that help to um, that help to facilitate that, which leads to a lot of women in the workplace. But all of this builds on itself. And so I think as a society, we've kind of past the tipping point of debating whether trying to work towards gender equality is something important, but how we're going to get there. And so we see very high representation of women in parliament. We see women in, in strong leadership positions, for example, the, the bishop of our national church is a woman, the head of the police force nationally is a woman, and these are wonderful role models. And so in my book, I try to talk to people really to serve as inspiration, people who are kind of living authentic lives and taking up the space that I think we all deserve to be taking up and, and really having our voices heard, whether that means that we are a, a fishing boat captain who is a woman or a, a soccer player or a writer or a, a mayor of a town. Yeah, I mean, it would seem to create equality more than just passing policies. You really need to remove obstacles. And I, I mean, it would seem to me that having women in power and in those positions are the best way to gain that perspective, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we can't see it, we can't be it. And I think it is so important for people to grow up knowing this. And a great example that we have is the fact that in Iceland, we had a female president from 1980 to 1996. And so an entire generation of kids grew up having a female president. And there are stories of little boys who would say, oh, I, I'd like to be president when I grow up, but are boys allowed to be presidents? I don't know. And, wow. you know, this shows you how important that sort of thing is. What a trip. Are, are there some ways that Iceland falls short? Absolutely. And I think people here are really keen on pointing that out. You know, we need a lot more women in the C-suite running companies, being invested in and investing in companies. We still uh, can't leave behind groups of women like uh, women of color, uh, women with disabilities, queer women. And we also have gender based violence here, like so many other places. And until we can really tackle that problem and eliminate it, we're not going to achieve gender equality. I don't know if you've been following the, the fight for equal pay here in the United States among female athletes specifically. Any advice you might have for that? I would say to them to persist. The world is watching. It's a long, exhausting effort. And uh, I at least admire people who really continuously fight for, for equal pay. I think it, it's so, so important. So thank you to all of them. Yes, 100%. It's been a pleasure. I've been so happy and lucky to talk with you today, but I know more Seattleites will have that opportunity coming up this weekend. Where will you be in town? 
I will be at the National Nordic Museum at 6 p.m. on Friday to talk all about secrets of the Sprachar at Standing Women of Iceland, life as a first lady, and any other questions you care to ask. <laughs>